In this video, I'm going to show you my technique for precisely combining different slicer settings with the same 3D print. This is an incredibly powerful approach to creating a 3D print that is optimized to exactly what you need, and I do it using surface modeling techniques. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Maker's Muse. So modifier meshes, which you're gonna to use to do this process, have been around in Prusa Slicer for many years now. I really like what they do, but I was looking for a way to precisely control how they affected my model. So recently what I've been doing is creating my own modifier meshes in the same CAD file as the model I'm creating, which are designed purposely to change the slicer settings in the areas they intersect. It might sound complicated, but don't worry, it's not too bad and it's worth sticking around because this modeling technique has massively upgraded my ability to make things like ant weight combat robot chassis exactly what I need within the available weight limit. But what are modifier meshes and how do you use them? Well, as I mentioned, they've actually been in Prusa Slicer for quite some time now. And normally what you do is you have your model, like this is the ant weight frame for my robot pancake. So you would right click it and then you can add modifier. And you can add various primitives or you can import uh, your own meshes to use as a modifier if you wish. Now that's fine and all. And I can see I can move it around and intersect the model where I want. But the precision of what it's going to affect isn't all there, which is what we'll get to later. But how they work is the area they intersect here on the right hand side. You can see that I can actually add custom settings to that modifier mesh that will only put those settings into the area where that modifier mesh is intersecting with the main model. So for example, I can change the infill type. So I can change the infill type from 15% grid, and I can change that to, let's say, concentric, and then ramp it up to 100%. So let's say this area at the front, I want it to be really tough. So that's gonna change infill to a different type. I'll say slice. And you can see where that cube has intersected the model, it's changed the infill type in that area only to 100% concentric, but it's left the rest of the settings of the print alone. But I don't wanna use primitives to sort of arbitrarily move into place and change slicer settings. What I wanna do is precisely control where those slicer changes are implemented. And as you've probably guessed, the way to do it is to model your own modifier meshes. And I do that in Fusion 360 using surface modeling techniques. So you start with a model like this, and then once you create the bodies that are gonna be used as modifier meshes, it looks like this. And don't worry, this glitchy mess is exactly what we're after. So here in Fusion 360, I have the chassis for my 150 gram Antweight Combat Robot Pancake. Now I've actually already fought with this before, you can see it here, and it did pretty well. But the thing is, these robots have to have a weight limit, they can only weigh up to 150 grams. So getting the chassis as lightweight as possible is really important. That means it's actually taken some damage in areas that I think could be thickened up. So I've learned a lot from this and I want to add a bit of strength selectively in areas of this model, but I can't just thicken the whole thing because it's gonna weigh too much and it's a waste of plastic. Now to do this, I'm gonna be using the surface workflow in Fusion. And if you haven't used surface modeling before, don't be too intimidated. It's actually an incredibly powerful way to model complex geometries. In fact, surface modeling is very similar to how you create STL and 3MF files. Those files are actually made up of tessellated triangles which have zero thickness and they simply enclose an area which is then defined as a solid in the slicer, which is known as being manifold or watertight. With surface modeling, it's much the same. You create zero thickness surfaces and then you can create solid bodies by intersecting and joining those surfaces together by uh, knitting and welding them into uh, different shapes. And that enclosed body it creates is then a solid you can then take out and 3D print. And the reason I'm using surface modeling to create the modifier geometry is because I don't wanna have to 3D model in new details using sketches and parts when I already have the geometry I want. But before we begin, I recommend making a new component because well, we wanna keep these modifier meshes separate from the main uh, model and we don't want them joining or anything and a new component means it makes it much easier to do that. So to create our modifier meshes, I'm gonna use the surface offset tool. This tool lets you grab existing surfaces of the model and then as it says on the tin, you can offset them, but you can also simply copy them by turning the offset to zero millimeters. And the offset tool is a really easy way of just copying the geometry we want to create the modifier meshes from. So with the surface offset tool, unclick chain selection because we don't wanna select entire areas. And what I'm gonna do is look at the model and figure out exactly what I'm wanting to do. Now with this design, I've actually got some combat experience. So I know that the overall frame is actually fine being very lightweight, but up the front here, it does take some direct hits. 
I want that to be a bit thicker than it currently is. It's only one wall thick. And also where the threaded uh, heat set inserts are, there's only one wall of material there as well. So they can pull out quite easily. So what I want to do is actually I want to add more material around the bores for the threaded inserts. And also I want to add just a bit more material to the wheel wells and the front of the robot to make it a bit stronger for those impacts when it does get hit. So I'm going to go around and start with the wheel well and select that face, that face and that one. And then the front of the robot here, that one, that one, and that one. Uh, select those bores as well. And I'm happy with that. The offset is zero. So it's just copying those surfaces and then say, okay. And what you end up with is this. So these are uh, zero thickness surfaces that have been copied from the existing geometry, but we're not ready to move to the slicer yet because these are still zero thickness. So from here, we need to turn these surfaces that we've just copied into solid geometry that can be used as those modifier meshes. And the easiest by far way to do it is to use the thicken command. So what the thicken command does is it takes our zero thickness surfaces and gives them thickness as simple as that. Now it sometimes can fail when the surfaces are really, really curved or jagged or a bit dodgy, but for stuff like this, it's actually very, uh, very reliable. And it's the easiest and quickest way to add thickness to surface geometry. I'm going to show a different way in a second of how you can do it with a little bit, bit more control. But if you want to be quick and easy about it, this is how you do it. So I'm going to go around and select my uh, bore surface copies. I'm going to select the, uh, the wheel wells there and the front geometry there as well. I'm not going to select the back bit because I'm going to do something a little bit differently to that one. So I've got those selected and we can add some thickness. So let's just try one millimeter to see what happens. All right, so it's actually, it's actually offsetting in the wrong direction. You can see if I turn the original model back on, it's actually going out of the model. So I actually want to do a negative value. Uh, let's go minus one. There we go. So you can see what it's doing. It's actually taking our surface and creating a thickness offset of one millimeter into where the model actually is. Uh, and the thickness of this offset will determine how far your modifier actually affects the model. And depending on your surface geometry, you can only go so thick before it fails. So let's try uh, two. That's failed. So two won't work. Let's try 1.6. All right, 1.6 looks pretty good to me. So this is gonna affect the outside of the bores, which means I can add some more perimeters in those bores and the front part will be a lot thicker than the single perimeter that the rest of the model will be. And those sides look fine too, a little bit thicker as well. But this isn't gonna be enough for the bumper at the back. The bumper at the back, I wanna do something a bit different. And you can see what's happened on the left-hand side. It's actually hidden the original surface bodies and now given us those new thickened solid bodies, which can be used as modifier meshes. So with this bumper at the back, I don't wanna just thicken it because it'll create a weird shaped geometry. I actually wanna just completely cap off that open area there and create a new solid. And to do that, there's a tool called patch. So patch will take an open uh, loop and it will actually just cover it up like, you know, putting a patch of tape over the top of a, over top of a pipe or something. So with patch selected, it, you can see it, it highlights that edge. I can click it and then it just fills in that area nicely. Now this will not create a solid on its own. Doing a patch actually reveals that there's actually two uh, surface bodies now. To actually turn this into a solid body, you need to stitch it together. And up here we have stitch. So I can select the two solid bodies like that. And it'll show in green where it's stitching, like so. And if it is successful, it'll create a solid body. And there you go. We now have a solid body for the back, but you can see that it's actually got that geometry where it's got the outside surface copied, but it then curves off to when it hits the body. So it's going to be a nice sort of fat sort of bumper where I can increase the infill in that area to make it a lot tougher than the rest of the print. And if you've done things correctly, you'll end up with this horrible looking mess where the intersecting surfaces don't quite know what to do. <laughs> uh, but that's what we want because we're going to export them all at the same time into the same 3MF file. So make sure you have the geometry you want to export visible and any geometry you don't invisible. So keep those surface bodies turned off. And what you want to do is right click the file name and then we want to do save as mesh. Make sure you export as one file. By the way, you can find the full project files for this tutorial over on the Makers Muse community, where for just five bucks a month, you can join a dedicated group of 3D printing enthusiasts. Links in the video description. Okay, I've just dragged that model into Prusa Slicer and this has popped up and this is really important. This is asking if you want to treat that design as a single part with multiple objects, or if you want to treat it as separate parts that it will split apart and put on the print bed and auto arrange. 
Now we don't want to do that because the parts have modeled to be used as surface modifiers, as uh, modifier meshes. We want them to be positioned in the correct locations. So you must say yes. And you can see it brings it in as a single part with multiple bodies in it. You see all these different parts in the one. Now naming conventions probably would have been handy here. I can see I've left chassis as chassis, but everything else is just uh, default bodies. Uh, you might want to make your life a bit easier and just call it modifier one, modifier two, whatever. But for the purpose of demonstration, this is fine. Now, this is where the fun begins. What you want to do is select the parts that are becoming modifier meshes, right click them over on the right hand side, and then we're going to go to change type. And we're going to change the type to modifier. Now, unfortunately, you can't batch select them all and just do this. You have to do them one by one, which is very tedious. A feature request would be really nice to be able to just change the type to modifier uh, for many of them at once, but you can do it. Change type, modifier, okay? And you just go through and change them and we'll be right back. Okay, here we go. So what I've done is I've changed all of those different bodies we made into modifier meshes. So they've been assigned as a modifier mesh. Now, first things first, I wanna change the baseline settings for the file. So I'm going to go to print settings. And what I wanna do, I'm gonna leave the layer height at 0.2, that's fine. I'm gonna change the perimeters down to one uh, because I only want one perimeter for this model. And infill, I'm going to change that to, let's say 10% cubic. Let's go with that. And then what I personally like to do is increase the width of that external perimeter to like something like 0.6, a little bit thicker. I don't know why, but it's given me good results with TPU prints in the past. So this is before we've changed any of the settings within the modifier meshes. You can see as we scroll down that these bores, for example, they don't have much support around them. You can see that they're just one wall, which is what I've said for the rest of the model, but that they're going to be a little bit uh, uh, difficult to heat set into and not that strong. So I'm gonna go back to the file setup. I'm gonna start changing our modifier meshes to increase the strength of those areas. Now, what you might think the thing to do is to increase perimeters in that area. So in the past, I wanna make something strong. I've just added lots of perimeters, but what that does with modifier meshes isn't really desirable. I've noticed if you change the perimeters from what the overall file is, it will treat that area as like a separate entity and the, the perimeter won't be continuous. So just to give you an example, if I change the perimeters to like three in these areas and just copy paste that across the board, you can see that while it has made this sidewall thicker and stronger, it's no longer a continuous outer perimeter. It's actually treating it like a sort of separate intersecting body. Uh, and I can tell you that that's gonna be a weak spot. If that gets hit or you pull on it, that's just gonna tear apart. It's not gonna be nearly as strong as a continuous outer perimeter. So unfortunately, that's the case. I don't know if it's gonna change in the future. But what I found a good, as a good workaround is to instead of changing the outside perimeters, is to change the infill type to concentric, which is essentially like a perimeter, but it's treated as infill. Therefore, the outside perimeters aren't interrupted. So here we have the fill density at 100, and I'm gonna change the fill pattern to concentric. And now you can see as we've sliced it, the outside perimeter is still continuous, but if I zoom into one of these wheel wells and scroll down, you can see that we've got this nice thick line here that is a 100% concentric infill, which essentially is the same as just adding more perimeters, but it's not treated the same, and therefore we get that nice outside perimeter that will be nice and strong. And the really important thing is our bores as well are gonna be much stronger. You can see we've got three lines around those bores instead of just a single one. Same with the front of this robot, you can see we've got those nice extra perimeters around there. And the back where we added that nice thick pad, well now we've got this nice thick solid infill there that is filling the back of the model. And you can change these settings to be like a denser but not solid infill. You can change it to be completely hollow. For example, you want to invert what we're doing and make an area completely hollow using a modifier mesh. You can do so many, so many powerful things using this modeling technique. But was all of that work worth it? Well, let's look at the original file. The original file's final weight is calculated out at 33.55 grams. And the final model with the extra strength in the areas that we really need it comes out at 37.41 grams. So a very, very small increase in weight with a vastly improved increase in the model's strength and resilience in the areas that are most likely to see the most abuse. But it doesn't stop there. What I have here is Orca Slicer. And the reason I'm using Orca Slicer for the production version of Pancake's new chassis 
is because it has various features in it that are incredibly powerful and I'd say experimental that are not available in Crucial Slicer, despite the fact that this slicer is based off that slicer and also Bamboo uh, Studio and Super Slicer. So one thing I prefer in Orca Slicer is the way it's laid out, which is sort of based off Bamboo Studio, uh, is it makes it much easier to work with multiple bodies, and in this case, multiple modifier meshes. So here on the left-hand side, you actually have all your different bodies as objects, or you have your global overall settings. So in global, you change your overall settings, and then you can go to objects, and you can actually change your per object settings if I had multiple objects. But in this case, I can actually just use it to change the modifier meshes. So I can hold down shift, and select all of them at once, which is very handy. And then I can just change what I want here. So I can make sure, okay, I only really want the one wall loop, or I can do two. Still has the same uh, issue with the bodies sort of separating. If I do a uh, different wall uh, loop count to the original model, but that's totally fine. But I can change like all of the settings at once. So I can experiment. I can go, okay, maybe maybe I want instead of 100% uh, uh, concentric, maybe I want like 60% cubic for those modifier areas. And I can slice and have a quick look. And this is what it would look like. So maybe this is a better option than just having it solid and it will weigh a little bit less. But by far the main selling point for me for Orca Slicer right now for designs like this where weight is so critical is this setting here, ensure vertical wall thickness. It is not available in Prusa Slicer. They've just flat out removed it and it actually will add material to certain areas of geometry to ensure a thickness if that uh, geometry is at an angle. So with the perimeters, as they stack at an angle, it'll actually become thinner. So if you have this on, it'll add an extra uh, perimeter on sloped surfaces to ensure their thickness. And you can see as it builds up, it's adding that line there, and then it comes to uh, the solid infill at the top. But this is extra weight, and I don't really necessarily need it for what I'm doing. It's, it's definitely improves the reliability of a model, but if you're an advanced power user, then feel free to try turning it off and analyzing your G-code. So when this is disabled, what we get instead is this. So you can see that this model, it's gonna be fine. Like I can see the layers are stacking totally fine, but it's not adding that extra purple line. And that extra perimeter adds weight and it can be significant in some cases. Now in this case, it's only adding about a gram or two of weight, but with a robot that weighs 150 grams, that might put it over the limit. So being able to turn it off if you don't need it is really handy. So I do recommend if you're a power user, giving Orca Slicer a go. It is very friendly to newbies, but there is so many really powerful settings in here that are really, really interesting to dive into when doing crazy stuff like this design. Uh, I've really actually quite enjoyed using it. By the way, you don't have to use Fusion to do surface modeling. Lots of other CAD packages offer it, including Onshape, which is free with their free plan online. You can use surface modeling to create your own modifier measures in much the same way, and then use them to precisely change slicer settings within your model. And I'm really stoked to bring you guys this tutorial because it's been something I've been working on for a while. I haven't really used modifier meshes because they've been so tedious to use, but now they're a lot more precise and a lot more powerful. And I hope you find this technique useful. Catch you later, guys. Bye.